Paul Anthony and today we are going to be looking at the Headway Plus book and uh, I think we'll do Unit 9, Reading and Speaking. Let's put that there. So first of all, we are going to discuss about the sunset in the West. Now, we have to discuss together about these questions, if they're true or false. So let's just come over here. I'd like, uh, Mr. Lou, could you please read this part here for me? For many centuries, the world's biggest economies were all in the West. The 21st century will bring enormous changes to the economic world order. Ed Mulligan reports. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lou, what do you think it means, enormous? Very large. Very large. And when he says enormous changes, what do you think that means? Very large changes. Yes, that's very good. Very large changes. And here we have our article. It says sunset in the west. I'm going to bring it over here a bit. And uh, I'm just going to read the first part here. The first industrial economies were European. Until the 1890s, when the US became the world's economic superpower, in the 1960s, the Asian tigers arrived, and suddenly everything we bought was made in Japan and South Korea. But the populations of those new industrial nations are much smaller than America's, and could never produce enough money, sorry, could never produce enough to move the, the center of the world economy from west to east. Let's look at some of the vocabulary here. Um, superpower. What's a superpower, Lou? A major economic power, a country with a lot of industrial prowess. Thank you. A country with a lot of industrial prowess, yes. And uh, the Asian tigers. Who are referred to as the Asian tigers, Lou? Mm, they would be the largest the largest economies in Asia. Thank you for that. And then, uh, if we move down, we now have made in China. So, Mr. Liu, could you read about made in China for me? Yes. Now the East time has come. China, with its population of 1.3 billion, has already become the world's factory. If its economy continues to grow at 10%, it will become the biggest economy in the world by 2018. It will also take America's place as the world's largest oil market, thirsty for petrol to run the 140 million private cars on its road. Thank you for that, Mr. Liu. So, now the East time has come. The East's Time has come. What do you think the writer means by that? I think that the writer is saying that the East will see larger economic expansion and that uh, you'll see a lot of economic and industrial prowess, prowess coming out of the East. Thank you. Yeah, I, I believe you're right. And uh, it says China's population of 1.3 billion has already become the world's factory. What do you think it means, the world's factory? I would think that means that in China you're seeing a lot of industry, a lot of factories producing goods that are being sold all over the world. Thank you. That's a very good explanation. Um, thirsty for petrol. Thirsty for petrol. What does that uh, phrase tell us? I think it would mean that there are so many cars on the roads in China and there are so many businesses in China that need gasoline to run their operations that China will be producing a lot of industrial goods and will be buying a lot of gasoline in turn. Thank you for that, Mr. Liu. Let's move along. Rolex, let's put that there. Rolex now sell a third of their watches to the Chinese. 
The West was once afraid of China because of its communist ideas. Now it's more worried about China's success in capitalism. China has nearly 100 billionaires, although many of its people are still poor. A third of the world's luxury products, Chanel perfume, Rolex watches, Lacoste clothing, are now sold in China. What does capitalism mean, Mr. Liu? Capitalism is, is a system wherein there is private ownership of the means of production. Thank you for that. And uh, let's move now to the next part. China, it seems, is moving more and more towards capitalism, although it's technically a communist country. The sky's the limit, Lou. Could you read that for me, please? Yes. The pollution in the skies over cities like Beijing is one of the costs of this incredible success. Five out of ten of the world's most polluted cities are in China, and its economy will have to become greener as quickly as it has become more capitalist. Another problem for China's future economy is its population growth. Because of the one child per... Where is it? It's one child per family, isn't it? Here it is. It's over here. Family policy. Starting in the 1980s, the working population of China will start to get smaller in 2015. That's actually outdated information. They have a two-child policy now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is from a previous edition. So let's go back here, have a look at some of the vocabulary. So, Mr. Liu, can you tell us what does it mean, the sky's the limit? I think what they're saying is that the industrialization of China will continue and that you will be able to see more and more products coming out of China. The economy may continue to grow but they do have some problems that we'll be facing. Thank you for that. That is an excellent uh, description. Uh, we have the word pollution in the skies. What's that? Pollution in the skies. I think they're talking about carbon dioxide that's produced by their factories. And the carbon dioxide released into the air, the smoke and the soot that's released into the air, can cause a public health problem in China if it's not addressed properly. Thank you, yeah, public health problems. Yeah. Um, let's have a look what else we have. Incredible success. What does that mean, Lou? Um, I would think that what they're saying is there's a lot of industrialization in the Beijing area. There are a lot of factories producing goods that can be sold all over the world. But they're also saying that because of all these factories and all this economic activity, they are facing some pretty, some pretty, some pretty severe problems with pollution in that city. That's excellent. Uh, that's excellent. Yes, thank you for that, Lou. I'm sure our students will be very interested in uh, what you what you have to say about this. That's, that's excellent. Let's let's have a look at some some other vocabulary here. Um, it says its economy will have to become greener as quickly as it has become more capitalist. Greener. What do they mean by greener, Mr. Liu? I think what they're saying is that because they have a lot of pollution in the cities in China, they want to continue to have a lot of economic activity going on. They want to continue with their rapid industrialization but at the same time, they want to be sure that they are producing the products that they produce in a way that is conducive to a healthy environment. Thank you for that, Lou. I'm sure our students appreciate your input. Um, what, what else do we have here? Another problem? Population growth. Population growth. How would you define that, Mr. Lou? China does have the largest population of any country in the entire world and they may be having some problems with population growth in terms of being able to find good jobs for all these people, proper medical care for all these people, 
safe places to live for all these people. So population growth may be a problem for China as the country continues on. Thank you for that, Lou. Saying that uh, it will get smaller in uh, 2015, but now, as you say, it's 2017, and now they have a two-child policy. So do you think the population of China is actually going to go down? Because they went from a one-child policy, and now it's a two-child policy. I would have to actually look at data on that. I would want to see how the population of China has grown over the years. I would guess that with one-child policy, their population did decrease, and that with a two-child policy, the population will continue to decrease slightly over the years, but I would have to go ahead and be able to look over data to give a good answer to that one. Okay, thank you for that, Lou. Now I'm just going to read about uh, India. What about India? Everyone is talking about China as a future world superpower, but India isn't far behind. India already has over one billion people, and here there will be no problems finding enough workers for its fast-growing economy. If the population continues to grow as quickly as now, it will be bigger than China's by 2040. Do you agree with that statement, uh, Lou? It will be bigger than China's by 2040 if it continues to grow? Um, if this is a credible publication, then I would have to say yes, it will. But once again, I would want to look over data in terms of population growth and economic growth over the years before I can make a final, um, a final resolution. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay. And Lou, could you tell us um, what, what it means by finding enough workers? Finding enough workers, what does that term actually mean? That would probably tell me that a lot of people in India are either unemployed or underemployed, possibly employed part-time when they should be employed full-time. And so as more and more factories open up and more and more jobs become available, India will not have a problem with getting those kinds of people into better and better jobs, making more and more money, and um, contributing to the economic growth in India. Well, thank you for your contribution on that one, Lou. That, that was really, really good. Um, we just go up here. And Lou, perhaps you'd like to read about our next part, just here. And although it has enough cheap workers to produce a car for $2,000, India is not just a gigantic factory. It has an enormous number of highly educated scientists, engineers, and IT specialists. Many of the most successful technology companies are used, are used Indian teams to design software from their mobile phones and computers. The vice president of Cisco Systems said recently, I find Bangalore one of the most exciting places in the world. It's what Silicon Valley in California was in 1999. Thank you for that, Mr. Liu. Um, the headline, Bangalore is one of the most exciting places in the world. And uh, here's the, this references this. Um, it says here, it has enough cheap workers. What does that phrase mean, cheap workers? It would tell me that there are enough people in India who are willing to work for very low wages such that they can produce products for very low amounts of money. Thank you, Lou. Yeah, I have to agree with you. And uh, I like your uh, explanation. It's very good. I'm sure the students will gain a lot from your, your higher level of knowledge, actually. And, uh, uh, I certainly appreciate your input, and I'm sure the students will appreciate it too. Um, gigantic factory. In relation to this article, what does it mean, gigantic factory? Gigantic means extremely large, and so I think what the author is saying is that India is not just a very large producer of industrial goods. There are other areas of its economy that are valuable worldwide. Thank you, Lou. Uh, 
an enormous number, an enormous number. What does that tell us, Lou? Enormous also means very large, and so I think what they're saying is that there's a very large number of very educated people in India who can contribute not just to the industrial economy, but to the knowledge economy as well. Thank you. What are scientists, Lou? What are scientists? A scientist is anyone who uses the scientific method. The scientific method would be a process by which people develop hypotheses, they do studies that test those hypotheses, they publish the results of their tests based on those results, they develop new hypotheses, and then they test those new hypotheses in such a way that there is a progression of knowledge in a given field. A scientist is anyone who uses that as a scientific method. Thank you very much, Luke. And could you tell our students what is meant by engineers? I think of an engineer as someone who uses mathematics to delve into difficult issues such as how to effectively build a building or how to effectively design a car or effectively design a boat. I think an engineer is someone who uses mathematics to delve into those kinds of issues. Thank you for that, Lou. That's interesting, yeah. And, uh, IT specialists. What are they, Lou? IT specialists. IT stands for Information Technology. So an IT specialist is someone who has highly advanced knowledge of computers and the internet and technology in general. Thank you very much. Why do you think that the Vice President of Cisco Systems said I find Bangalore one of the most interesting places in the world. Well, Cisco Systems is a company that makes semiconductors. Uh, they're very important in the information technology industry. If he says that Bangalore is one of the most exciting places in the world, I think that he, as an IT specialist, is saying that you can find a lot of intellectual prowess in Bangalore that relates to the information technology industry. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Thank you very much for that. Let's just see how else we have. Ah, yes. So now I'm just going to read about from west to east. Between them, China and India have a third of the world's population. Every year they produce a million graduates in science and engineering. The U.S. produces 70,000. Entering industry and doing research in university departments. Whether China or India becomes the leading economic power, the results for the West will be the same. America's time as the world's most powerful nation will soon be over. And all Western countries will have to live in a changing world where the sun rises in the east once more. Mr. Liu, would you agree with that uh, particular article? I think the article is very optimistic about China's and Indian progress and is very pessimistic about progress in the United States of America. I think that there is an argument to be made for progress in the east but I think the United States and other countries are producing a lot of very important research results, that the United States and Western countries have some of the world's best universities, and that there are some really outstanding minds throughout America who can contribute to industrial and other kind of economic progress as well. I understand the author's argument, but I can definitely see counter arguments to it. Thank you, Mr. Liu. You provided the students with some very highly knowledgeable facts, and I'm sure they're going to make valuable use of this lecture. Thank you very much for that, Liu. What do you think, Liu? Number one, the first big industrial economies were European. Is that true? True. True, okay. The populations of Japan and South Korea are nearly as big as America's. False. Uh-huh, false. Number three, China now has the biggest economy in the world. False. False, okay. There are many billionaires in China. 
True. Yes. Let me just move that. Indi uh, where are we at? India's population is much smaller than China's. That would depend on how you think of the word much. Yeah, I don't think it's much smaller. They're catching up because they've got a billion, over a billion people. So um, I would say false. Yeah, I would too. India is very successful in the world of IT. True. Yeah, that's true. And the West will soon become less important in the world economy. According to the author, true. Hmm. Okay, now we're just going to check that. So, number one, true. The period when the first countries became industrialized is known as the Industrial Revolution. It began in Britain. So, number one is true. The period when the first countries became industrialized is known as the Industrial Revolution. It began in Britain and then spread to other European countries. Number two is false. The populations are US, 311 million. Oh, this is as of 2015. So this is two years old, I should point that out. Uh, Japan, 128 million, and South Korea, 49 million, and that was in 2011. In the 1960s, the period that the text refers to, the populations were US, 195 million, Japan, 99 million, South Korea, 29 million. Number three is false. The US still has the biggest economy in the world. It's likely that China will have the biggest by 2018, which is only next year, but that's a prediction. It's not definite. Number four is true. There are nearly 100. Number five is false. China's population is now, as of 2011, 1.3 billion and India's 1.2 billion. Number six is true. Many of the biggest IT companies use Indian teams to develop their products. Number seven is true. The balance of economic power is already moving from west to east, to China and to India. Okay, Mr. Lu, in the articles we have uh, different words and uh, different parts of speech and we're going to try and match them up between the nouns and the adjectives and the verbs. Let's have a look. So economy, this is a noun. Economic, this is an adjective, but what about industrial? Here, it's an adjective. What is it as a noun? Industry. Industry. Uh, the verb to produce. Noun. Product. Product. Yeah. Uh, the verb to grow. Growth. Growth. Growth yeah. Um, now, don't forget this time, capitalism as an adjective. Capitalist. Yes, capitalist. Uh, pollution as a noun. Pollute. Is that uh, adjective? Uh, pollution as a noun. The adjective describes, perhaps it's the same, pollution, pollution. Because it's the verb to pollute, so the adjective, I would say, is pollution. That's what I would say, it's the same. Uh, the, the noun success, the adjective successful. successful. Let's see what we come up with here. So, uh, economy, noun, economic, adjective, industrial, adjective, industry, noun, produce, the noun is also produce. Um, Grow as the verb, growth as the noun, capitalism is the noun, capitalist is the adjective, pollution is the noun, polluted, that's the word we were looking for, is the adjective, success as the noun and successful as the adjective. Now, when you do a reading, what you should do is look at the words like this and take, a take time out to look in your dictionary to check the meanings of the word and they will be listed as whether or not they're adjectives, nouns or verbs. So this would really be dictionary work from the readings. This time we have answer the questions. Okay, we're going to answer the questions. So number one, 
Why didn't the Japanese and South Korean economies become as big as America's? What can you tell me about that, Mr. Liu? I would assume it's because they had fewer workers, they had less land mass, they have fewer natural resources, and they don't have the industrial and knowledge economy prowess that could be found in America. Thank you very much. Why is China called the world's factory, Mr. Liu? China does have very high level industrial prowess. China does produce goods that are sold all over the world. Thank you. And why does China need to become greener? The author said that five of the world's ten most polluted cities are in China. There are environmental problems such as smog in the air in major cities like Beijing. So China does need to continue to develop economically, but it has to do so in a way that is more environmentally friendly. Thank you for that, Lou. Yeah, that's good. Um, why will China's population start to get smaller? China did have a one-child po uh, one policy for a period of time to try to decrease its, uh, to decrease its population. They now have a two-child policy that should further decrease the country's population. Yeah. So the government, first they said you can only have one child, but now they've increased it to two. So you can have two children. Um, if you have more than that, you do have to pay a fine. So some families do actually have more than two children in China. But if they do, they are subject to pay money. A fine is money they have to pay. Um, what is India especially good at? India produces a lot of scientists, engineers, and IT professionals. Their knowledge economy is very, very largely progressive. Yes, it is. Thank you for that, Mr. Liu. And how will America's place in the world change? As an American, Mr. Liu, what do you think? According to the author, America was, or America is currently the largest economy in the world, but it looks like these other countries like China and India are producing a lot of high level people in science engineering and information technology. That China is very, very industrial and has continued to develop. That India also has a lot of workers that can work in industry as well. And the author says that America's place in the world will become less and less important economically as China and India continue to develop. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Liu. And uh, what do you think these numbers refer to, Liu? 10%. Now, the East time has come. China, with its population of 1.3 billion, has already become the world's factory. If its economy continues to grow at 10%, it will become the biggest economy in the world by 2018. So now, you know, yeah. 2018. 2018 was the year at which the China's economy should overtake America's economy. Yeah, because we were talking about the 10% growth by 2018, overtake the world's economy, which at present is the present USA. Uh, 140 million. And once again, we'll look back at that. Yeah, 140 million. There we are. Yeah, you're right. It will also take America's place as the world's largest oil market, thirsty for petrol, to run the 140 million private cars on its road. You're absolutely right, Mr. Liu. Let's go to the next. And the next one is 100. And we'll once again look at the passage. Okay. One last one. Bring that back. We have 100 millionaires. Oh, yes. China has nearly 100 billionaires. That's very good. Let's go back. The next one is 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. China has 5 out of the 10 most polluted cities in the world. Yes, China has 5 out of 10 of the most polluted cities in the world. 2,000. I'm going to look back at the passage for that. Let's have a look. Aha. And although it has enough cheap workers to produce a car for $2,000, it 
India is not just a gigantic factory. So uh, the, the, the price of the cars, it costs $2,000 to produce a car uh, in India. Let's go over here. A million! I want to back the passage again for a million. Okay. A million graduates. Yes, that's right. Every year they produce a million graduates in science and engineering. And finally, a third. I want to let back the passage again. Okay. A third. I saw it somewhere. Ah, here we are. Found it. From west to east, between them, China and India have a third of the world's population. And uh, that brings me to the end of my lesson today, my demonstration lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, a special thanks to uh, Mr. Liu for his obvious knowledge in many, many areas here. So I'm quite impressed by that. And uh, I'd like to just thank you very much for watching the video. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.